What's up, people? Welcome to Ben Samalak TV. Ben Samalak here, evangelist teacher, coming here to uh, share with you some verses I went over with. Uh, had a Bible study recently and really enjoyed these verses on how uh, a Christian, a believer, many times we can uh, lose power uh, as a believer. We can lose focus. We can lose purpose and just go through the motions. Um, I grew up in a Christian family, so I had a lot of knowledge. I understood a lot about the Bible. I saw you know, I heard uh, hymns when I was in my mom's stomach when, you know, before I was born. You know, my mom was sitting in church meetings when I was in her stomach. So I have grown up always hearing about the Bible, God, singing hymns, hearing hymns, hearing messages. And so, you know, uh, you, you can become very, how should I say it? Um, we, we just think we know everything, right? Everything's so predictable. We, we really feel like as a, you know, that we know exactly what to expect from God what it is to be a Christian, what God wants, how to do it. We are, we're, we're really good at going through those motions. And what happens is you end up missing God, uh, missing the God of the universe, his reality, his, his, uh, you know, his power, the reality, the experience, you know, being able to experience God today in your life. When you look at the Bible, there's many characters who gave themselves to Christ, who gave themselves to God, and experienced him in a very, very romantic way. You know, I had one uh, one time a, a, a brother preached and said that to have, to be a Christian is the most romantic life. God is a romantic God. The Bible is a divine romance. So when you when you think about it like that, what you know about God and how you have him in your little box, you know, I would say open your mind open your spirit open your heart to see there's a lot more to god because he's the creator of the universe if he's only as big as what you think that you have and what you've been experiencing then you are definitely uh in for a surprise you're definitely um have to open up and realize that there's more to god and those that that you know i was at a church conference when i was a high, in high college and, and, the, and the guy sharing really inspired me as he told me all the experiences that he had of God because he was absolute committed to God in his life and pursued God and, and wanted to serve and pursue the church and the Lord to the point where God was so real to him. And he shared many experiences. And then when he went through the Bible, he made the Bible alive and, and really showed how these ones in the Bible who pursued God, who committed to God, who wanted to seek God in a really uh, unique and powerful and committed way found God they found him they experienced him they they saw him in many ways in their life so let me show you an example of when I was uh, reading this Bible study I'm going to share my screen here real quick and I was enjoying these verses we'll start off with Samuel uh, here it is first Samuel so this is first Samuel chapter 3 now this just even when a first verse you know we're reading through Samuel right now the first verse I read it and it, it stood out to me it said and the boy Samuel now Samuel was uh, Hannah she was she, you know she wasn't able to have children she went to the temple and prayed to the point where she was so desperate to God that's number one we have to become desperate if you think you know everything about God then you're not going to be desperate to seek God in different ways uh, the Bible said the Lord's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him diligently she was desperate she was so you know caught up in prayer to God to have a baby that when Eli saw her he thought she was drunk that's how you know before the Lord she was possessed in the spirit just praying to the Lord and, and just desperate to have a child and when Eli saw this you know she, she's like why are you drunk so anyways she, she found God God blessed her gave her a child and she actually said, if you give me a child, God, I'll give this child to you and your to your purpose. And God likes those prayers. When we pray, God, you know, when we pray, help me with my family, help me with my job, help me with my, you know, this, 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 help me, help me, help me. God will answer those prayers many times because he loves us. He, he wants to take care of us. But when we pray according to God's heart, God, this is for your church. This is for your son. This is for you, Father. May this happen. Pray, pray that prayer in your life you will see God in, in amazing ways. So she had a miracle. She couldn't have a baby. And because she prayed and said, I'll give my child to your purpose, God, to the church, to your temple, she had a, she conceived and had a baby. And she was faithful. She gave uh, Samuel to the temple when she weaned him. And now Samuel's in the temple. And, and it says, this is now chapter three. He's a, he's a boy. 
the boy Samuel ministered to Jehovah before Eli. Now the word of Jehovah was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. That's many times in our church or in our in our own personal life that is Jehovah's words rare to you? When's the last time you heard Jehovah speak to you? When's the last time you heard the Holy Spirit speak to you in your life? This is for me as well, right? I, when I read this, I was, I'm always exposed to realize, wow, what am I doing? Why am I always so content with where I'm at in, in, the, in my walk with Christ? Why do I feel like this is it, what, what I have? And many times I know there's something I should be doing or, you know, you have this, this, this sense that there's more to my Christian life. And all that is, is we need to become desperate again. You don't need to do something or go somewhere, you know, per se, to, to have God's word. You just need to become desperate again, come to him seek him seek him in the church seek him with the brothers and sisters seek him in the word seek him in prayer be desperate like hannah and and we need to have his word they were rare in those days and visions we could see visions now uh when when the when the wise men saw that star there was a they had a vision not other no one else saw that star just them isn't that interesting when paul was on the road to damascus he saw the light and it said it was jesus paul paul saw uh saw why do you persecute me and no one else saw it paul saw it. there was they saw his visions the lord wants to come to individuals and give them visions of himself they were rare and they were not widespread in those days today how about us today are the, is the word rare in your uh in your life are the visions not widespread have you had many visions lately this is something we need to become desperate for again in the church and what happens when we ha we don't have the Lord's word in our life, when we don't have his visions, his reality in our life? Our church life becomes very mundane, very routine. We begin to backslide. We begin to question God. We begin to be tricked. We begin to be deceived. We begin to question even all the experiences we had of God. We need a, The Lord is good for food, the Bible says. The, the Lord is a tree of life, like into the tree of life. Uh, there was two trees in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. They were not supposed to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which they did. They were supposed to eat of the tree of life. The tree of life represents God. Why? Because number one, he's beautiful. God is beautiful to look at. Number two, God is our food. He's our nourishment. So we need to be partaking of him every day in a fresh and living way, just like you need to eat every day or you become weak. And eventually, if you don't eat long enough, you die. And that's why some Christians you see so long go on with the Lord and all of a sudden what happens? They backslide, they fall into some deep sin. They, something happens and you just, How, what happened? Even they say, what happened? How did I do that? How did I get here? Because we stopped eating, we stopped seeking the Lord's word. We stopped seeking those visions from the Lord to, to be one to it, one with his economy, one with his purpose. We begin to use God for ourselves and we forget God has an economy, God has a purpose, and we forget that and, and we forget to seek the visions that God would give us to help us become one with him and his economy and his purpose for this, uh, for what he wants on this earth today and what his plans are. We want to become one with him. So what happens when we start to fall, we become lukewarm like Eli. Eli, you know, what happened to him? His sons became so sinful, you know, they, they were in the temple just you know sinning just ugly gross sin and what did Eli do for this he nothing and because of that he didn't have the visions he didn't have the word even though he was the priest you know you could be following God for a long time you could be a pastor you could be a full-time worker in the church you could be uh just you know someone in the church just who, who's just been there 30 40 years a, a leading brother and just not seen anything no power from the God no from God no discernment from God no ability anymore to to uh, to serve the Lord to be one uh, shepherding in the church caring for God's interest and what what happened here you know the Lord told us Samuel and said I'm gonna do all this stuff to Eli in his house you know because of his sons um, and then this is this is here it says for his sons brought the curse upon themselves and he did not restrain them he did not restrain them. God said this to Samuel. He told him, Eli did not restrain them. So what happens as we become lukewarm, as we become mundane, as we become comfortable with how we have found, you know, how we've uh, enjoyed God in our life up to this point, we begin to become weak and unable to stand with God's interests. And even though there's deep, dark sin around us in our family, in the church, what happens? We have no ability to discern anymore, to, to, um, to, uh, 
to, to discipline, right? Or to admonish or to, uh, you know, help these brothers and sisters, to help these ones. Um, and he didn't even care. It was like once, you know, and therefore I swore in Eli's house that iniquity of the house of Eli shall not ex be expedited by sacrifice or by offerings forever. So God was very upset with, with the way these guys were behaving, Eli's sons. Um, and he didn't want to, you know, Samuel didn't want to tell Eli. He finally told him, uh, and then he said, let me know what, what it is. And Samuel told him everything uh, and did not hide anything. And he said, he is Jehovah. Let him do what is good in his sight. So Eli's, even his response to when he found out that he was going to, in his house, would be punished because he didn't do anything about his children. He was so just nonchalant didn't didn't there was no care there's no feeling instead of repenting instead of falling on his knees and putting ashes on his head and saying god forgive me help my children please forgive us you know there was no expiation for them uh but god jehovah has in the past changed his mind when when men become repentant jehovah heart softens and he can forgive he can he can you know allow because he's god he has the ability to to forgive, to, you know, cause a way for these ones to be rescued, to be recovered. But Eli had no feeling. So this is what happens to us when we don't have, when we're void of God's word in our life, when we're void of the vision, when we are not desperate, when we, when we stop seeking God, when we stop pursuing him, when we just become routine, when we just wake up, brush our teeth, eat breakfast, go to work, come home, watch TV, go home, go to sleep, wake up, brush our teeth, you know, day in, day out till Sunday. Then we go to church, we sing, we touch God. We have a really enjoyable time. We, we ask, forgive us, God, that I, I feel like I, I missed you. I was gone. Give my 10%. Uh, go home Monday, go home to Sunday night and back to TV or go out with our family. Forget about God. Monday, wake up, brush our teeth. You know, same thing. And feeling like we, we're good. We go to church. Maybe I'll, I'll crack my Bible open once a, once a week or so. I'll go to a, a, a prayer meeting or a, a fellowship meeting or a gospel meeting or a Bible study. I, I, I'll do all the right things, but where is God in our life? Are we are we desperate before him? Are we on our knees praying to him? Are we seeking him in the word desperately uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a way that's, you know, in a committed way, in a way that we're really hungry for God, that we want him? Are we telling him are we repentant? Are we open? Are we humble? There's no humility in Eli. He's just, well, that's God. That's God. He'll do what he's going to do. And, you know, when I looked at Moses, I, I, uh, I was reading my kids a bedtime story, and they were talking about in Moses, it was the, the, when he was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments. And it's so funny, these Israelites, you know, they just got out of Egypt. They're, they're just saturated with the world. So Moses leaves them for a short time, and they can't even handle it. They got to, like, they got to create an image, a statue, an idol right away. Uh, even though they saw these marvelous works and God rescued them, they were so constituted with the world, you know, God still had to you know, work himself into them, just like he does us. He needs to transform us, conform us. You know, he needs to give us his, his manna daily until we, be, we get the work. The world has to get worked out of us. We need to get sanctified. We need to get transformed, regenerated, sanctified, transformed, conformed, even in some glorification where God is just saturating us. These guys decided, hey, let's make an idol. So Moses comes down. Jehovah tells him, these people are messed up. Go down there. They've done some great folly. And, and they're exposed. Oh, we don't know what happened. This is so funny. My daughter was like, what? You know, they put the gold in the fire and a calf just came out. <laughs> and it's like, just like little kids, you know, something my daughter was, I don't know what happened. It just, we did this and it just happened, you know. And, and what, but here's the key. Here's the difference. This is between Eli and Moses. You know, God did come in and discipline, but it says, And on that next day, Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to Jehovah. Perhaps I can make expiation for your sin. Perhaps. So even though he knew these guys were in big trouble, Moses said, I'm still going to go before God and fight for you. Even though you guys are hard-headed, you know, they, they complain to Moses. They, you know, they want to go back to Egypt. They, you know, even, you know, be angry at Moses. And Moses still has a heart for God, and God, he knows God's heart is for this people. So because of that, Moses' heart is for this, this immature, crooked, worldly people, sinful people. And so he goes up to the mountain, and Moses returned to Jehovah and said, Oh, this people have committed a great sin and have made a god of gold for themselves. And now, if only you will forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me out of your book, which you have written. He was so desperate for, for God. Do you see that? For petitioning for these ones, saying, 
God, if you don't if you don't forgive them, just blot me out. I mean, he was, and I think God appreci- appreciated that prayer because even though he's a righteous God, he had to take care of the sin that these guys were committing. He still loved this people. He still has a purpose and a plan for man, fallen man. So because of that, this one was fighting for them. This one was even re- taking responsibility for these one's actions, saying, blot me out. He took responsibility. So this is a true, mature lover of God. Uh, this is one who has God's word present in his life. This is one who has visions on a regular basis and is able to fight for God in his interests, is able to fight for man, is able to be one with God and to, you know, see God and be and, and be part of what God is doing on this earth today and be one who has a romantic life. Think of how romantic Moses' life must have been, seeing God on the mountain, having being a friend to God, you know, having God just, uh, go through all these miracles and helping the people and, and, and seeing the temple built and seeing the expression of God on earth and seeing these people transform and seeing these people go into the good land and, and becoming God's testimony on the earth. How beautiful, how wonderful going through all the battles, seeing God uh, fight the battles, you know, in the history goes on these these this people how romantic god was and then to abraham to isaac to jacob to joseph right to where all these these stories you see how god came through in these people's lives who were desperate for him who were seeking him who wanted to be one with him who were following him and it all comes through us seeking desperate humble open not thinking we already know a god Get, getting throw the box away that you put god in and come to him in a fresh open way today ask him give me your words lord jesus give me your visions i'm desperate i want more be real we need this today brothers and sisters in the church we need this god god is looking for some so that he can come back so that he can show himself on the earth today he can rescue some he can save some from this world this world which is so evil and vile and and empty and and just devours people chews them up spits them out it's all vain it's all illusion it's all fake you go for the world you touch it and, and you never get it you eat it and it's just it's empty to your stomach it, it's, it's poison right on the contrary you get god's word and it fills you it nourishes you it satisfies you it supplies you it brings you to this living one this living one who becomes real to you this Jesus, you're desperate. You get these words and you see these visions of this one. What, who did Paul see on the road? He said, he saw this light and this light said, who are you, Lord? You know, Jesus. Not only did he see Jesus, he saw the church. Who are these ones that, perse- that I'm persecuting? It's the church. He, Paul realized he saw that this light was Jesus and that this Jesus was the res- is, is God and that he is all for the church. And from that moment, Paul saw it. He had that vision. And in his life, he began to follow the Lord Jesus and to to care and love the church. So praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I hope that word was helpful to some today. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, Tune in next time. Have a nice day.